discussing the priesthood, and especially one particular type of priesthood, that is the religious priesthood. We're going to visit now the Redemptorist community at uh, the parish of St. Martin uh, in Bethpage. Uh, Saint Mar the Redemptorist, the religious community founded by St. Alphonsus. We're going to uh, meet with Father Jim uh, Sabonia, who will tell us something about his life as a, as, a, as a religious priest and a parish priest, and a little about uh, the background that he comes from. We are a Redemptorist parish uh, here, and uh, it's a little different than a diocesan uh, parish in the sense that uh, we have to live in community here. We have four priests, um, and so that frees us up to do other things. Um, you know, a lot of times a diocese can only put, I think the diocese would only have two priests here, um, but we have four priests because of our religious order and our charism of community. Uh, but that also frees um, us priests to do extra work. Uh, like when I first came here, um, that I was the DRE. I was the director of religious education and stuff like that. Usually a priest would not do that kind of work. So it's, um, I think, us, uh, that would be one of our, one of the gifts as a community that we do uh, can work more with the people because we have more priests and, and we can do that. Um, for here, my work that I, I've enjoyed the mo most has been um, our, our family mass, uh, 10 o'clock on Sunday morning. Um, our pastor, uh, Father John Tizio, uh, was a, a, a chaplain, a high school chaplain for 13 years, and he was the one who introduced here that we would focus on family mass, a children's homily, but he introduced me to the props, you know, to bring props out. Um, and we've had great success with the props. So we've more than doubled the amount of kids and, and young families that would come. Um, um, and as I've been, you know, growing here in my, my own parish, my ministry here, it's, you know, Jesus always used props. You know, he would, he would, the weeds and the sheep and the bread and, you know, he would, uh, the coins, he would always, and so now what we try to do is we use current day props to try to teach mysteries and, 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 and truths about the faith. Um, just thinking one now, um, I, I, I brought a vacuum cleaner out to try to describe confession. You know, that confession is so easy. It's it's just like vacuuming. You just go over the dirty spots of your life. And, uh, um, you know, like, uh, dust is like sin. You know, you got to do regularly, once a week. And I'll ask the kids, like, uh, uh, what happens if your mom doesn't want to vacuum any longer? And, you know, we'll get sick and get dirty. And then I'll say, well, that's what happens with the confession. You know, if, if you don't clean up. and But it's a nice way that the kids will remember confession. But they'll remember by the prop. I, I'm just remembering like, confession. I had a parent come to me and say, like, uh, Father Jim, I haven't vacuumed in a while. You know, so they use, they grabbed onto that. So that would be one of the on children's homilies using props, making it simple. You could say something very profound using a prop. Um, that would be one of the work. Another work that I do here a lot is I work with the dying here. Um, we have many funerals here. Um, this year we have our most. Uh, we average four funerals a week. Um, so I have a lot of experience working with the dying, and it's a, a very rewarding. It's a very I've seen such heroic things on on deathbeds, um, and and I've gotten deeper deeper understanding of of Mary and Jesus at the cross, and uh, you know it. It is the, the hardest thing anyone ever goes through, but it turns out to be the most beautiful thing anybody goes through. Like Mary, there wasn't anything tougher Mary went through than to be at the foot of the cross. And there was nothing more that she got more grace than she was at the foot of the cross. And so then I, I explain with people, like I, I, I get to share that with, uh, with people that I hear, I go into their deepest misery. And yet I could give them the hope that you're going to get the most grace from this because, you know, when the person needs you the most, you're there, you know. So it's a, a nice, I wasn't expecting, I never thought I would be doing that ministry, but uh, it's been a nice, uh, nice gift for me uh, as a priest. What's the way of life of Redemptorist? Uh, I would say for us Redemptorist, the key is, is preaching. Uh, we're a preaching order, um, so we focus on a preaching. Um, I said, I mentioned before, the simplistic apostolic preaching. So how can we best communicate? So I would say on a Redemptorist mind, 
Paul is not preaching. Uh, we do we specialize in parish mission preaching. Um, so even though I'm here in this parish, uh, um, we're encouraged to maybe do one or two missions a year that I'll go out maybe Lent or Advent or some other time and do a mission. So that would be a way of life that preaching is, is uh, essential for us. Another thing I would say, a way of life, we take a, a you, you, all religious orders take three vows. You take poverty, chastity, and obedience. We take a fourth vow called perseverance. Um, you know, so um, we're used to the challenges of, of um, you know, St. Alphonsus wanted to build, build in us like a, uh, that we can handle missionary work, um, the, the strains of it. And so um, that has been a very key, um, I know in my own life, the perseverance, like, not to give up, you know, and so that's, that's, so I just, I would say that's a way of life. Um, also with St. Alphonsus and, and Redemptress, study is important. Um, in the life of St. Alphonsus, what he used to do is he'd preach and do missions and confessions all during the days, um, but then at night he would do deep theological studies. Um, so I find myself, like, uh, I, I try to get away from the TV um, and try to read, read get, get into, you know, during the day I do them all my my works, the, the, the ministry work aspect of things, and, and then at night I try to keep up on my studies to try to stay up on the latest. That was So I would say that's a way of life for Redemptress. In the year of the priest, um, you know, I fought God tooth and nail that I didn't want to become a priest. Uh, I wanted to get married, I wanted to have children, and, uh, and now that I am a priest, and now I've tasted the joy of the priesthood, um, it is the most precious gift that God has given me. Well, we've heard somebody who's in religious life, uh, Father Jim, who's a, a redemptorist father. One of the things he talked about was taking vows. Jack, would you explain something about yes. what vows mean? Well, vows, I think most people understand, are, are basically a promise to God. And uh, these are what you call public vows uh, because they're made in the name of the church and accepted by the church. So they aren't just a private vow. Um, and uh, and see mentioned they actually take a fourth vow and, and usually we have poverty chastity and obedience are the vows of religious both men and women religious who are not priests as well as uh, a priest like father jim who's a uh, redemptorist and then he takes a fourth vow of, the, of perseverance um, as you mentioned before diocesan priests a lot of people get confused about you know priest as a priest but diocesan priests we're attached territory uh, to a territory to uh, a diocese and we don't take vows that doesn't mean of course we don't have obligations as we all three of us know uh, uh, we we don't have the vow of poverty so therefore we're allowed to own our own car and we can we, uh, we pay income tax a lot of people don't know that diocesan priests pay. we all know that they we pay income tax and uh, we are bound of course but not all permitted to marry because the law of the church says we can't get married if you're a priest. And we are also bound to perpetual continence, which is chastity, uh, but not technically a vow. That's why you said before it's an implied vow right. you know, for us. Uh, and uh, of course, obedience is different for us. Obedience is to our bishop and uh, as opposed to a religious superior. So they have a little bit of different, they're, they're, they're sort of, and we sort of said, they're unique, you know, it's a different way of living it. They actually take the same obligations, they have those obligations, but they also make a promise to God that they're going to do, as you said before, they're going to do something a little different, a little special, uh, to try to be more, even more like Christ in that sense, in that specific, in those specific ways, including, as he mentioned, even perseverance. We heard him talk about uh the special role he saw that the congregation of the Most Holy Redeemer, the Redemptorist, had of, of preaching and, uh, and study. And we know that uh, religious communities can be involved in different things. If, for example, there are the monastic communities, like the Trappists, who, uh, who live uh, a life really separate uh, and support themselves by, like, for example, the monks at, at Spencer who uh, make vestments and make jelly, or the, the monks at, uh, in, in Carolina who who support themselves by growing mushrooms. Uh, they support themselves by some kind of industry. But then you have the religious communities, uh, for example, like the Redemptors, who will, part of their work is to take parishes. You have others who, who teach, who are teachers, others who are in hospital work. So there's a whole variety of things that they get into. They, they have their life together and the vows they make, but then many of them, some of them are, are meant to be mostly prayer and, and 
the meditation and others involved in the active ministry. The fact that they came into existence probably around that work that somebody saw, or the, the leadership saw, it was, was a good work that we would do. Really, is it? I guess an inspiration from God. I mean, that's one of the great things about religious life. They really seem to come together or have a long history around some particular work or 